<laughs> um, okay, could you start out with uh, saying what the thing you always say to me? You know, if you do what you love, you never go to work a day in your life, and that's the truth. Uh, I've been blessed where I've been able to do what I want, um, and it hasn't been easy. It hasn't always been easy, but I've been blessed. I've been able to make a decent living at what I love to do, and I still love to do it, and I'm 72 years old. I actually own an auto body repair shop. I found it very interesting doing auto body repair work. And it's not just the day-to-day -day grind stuff. Years ago when I started out, we used to do a lot, of, uh, a lot of custom stuff, a lot of building cars. Like uh, I, I would see a picture of a car. i said I have to have that. So I would start going around to swap meets. Uh, I built a 1927 Ford Lowboy Roadster that was burgundy and chrome, and it was all chrome. And it was a lot of fun. It was, I had a great time with that car. But built uh, coupes and sedans, um, very artistic, very, you know, kind of known for that. It was a lot of fun. I haven't built a car in, uh, got about 40 years, 35 years. You have to finance, you know, life by working on other people's cars. But it's, you know, it's a lot of fun to build cars, to see something you like and put it back together and put it together, and that's a lot of fun. But anyway, that's what I do for a living. We have, we have a very nice, successful business uh, in Westlake, real well known. And it's because of the people that work with us. Uh, Diana and I kind of run the business, and then we have other people that now they work with us. But I still do work. Yeah, just rust and collisions. So that's what we do for a living. But uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, a real blessing that I've been able to do this my entire life. I loved shooting this footage. Under my grandpa's definition, it wouldn't be classified as work. The stakes were low and the company was familiar. I got to spend time with my grandpa and my mom. I felt like a kid following around his grandpa at work. Well, it was. I find my grandpa to be very inspiring. I want to be like him when I grow up. I'll go rear step replacement. Okay. Good. Uh, always building cars. Always building two, three, four cars a year. Uh, I put this one together for your mother several times. Uh, it's a Mustang convertible, 72 Mustang convertible. The grandma had it when we got together. And it's loaded, it has every option on it. Uh, it's an air conditioned convertible with a 351 Cleveland. I, I have it in the shop now, we just finished it up. Just finished painting it and putting it together. And yesterday I was in here putting door handles in it. Uh, so it's it's, on its way, everything is there to rebuild it. I had heard stories about his passion project throughout my childhood. And uh, I just painted that, I think, on New Year's or New Year's Eve or sometime around there, and putting it back together and totally restoring it. It's very, very, very pretty, very, very sharp, and it's not the shop. Getting to shoot his Mustang was especially exciting. It seemed like the epitome of his philosophy. I found myself projecting onto it. The car becoming a parallel symbol of my mind of what working on the project was for me. Fortunately, like the car, this project wasn't finished yet. I was laughing with Grandma yesterday. I said, God, I said, I'm putting the door handles in the car, and the first door handle took me like two and a half hours. I put it in, it's not right, and, it not, and it's not, oh my God, I forgot to put the gasket underneath it. So I had to take it all apart again, and oh, it was horrible. So the first one took me about two and a half hours. And I did the passenger side first, in case I screwed it up. <laughs> so, and then it took me like an hour to do the driver's side, so it was much more productive. So, yeah, it's just you know, from this point on, it's just plugging away. Mm -hmm. 
I did not love editing this project. It was work. The truth is, I was hoping to make this project as an affirmation that this is what I love to do. I was hoping that I could find the answer for my grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, if you could, uh, obviously that's a lot of your own, whatever you found, what works for you. And like, mm -hmm. I guess, what, what advice would you have for people trying to find what they, um, what they, what they love? Like, yeah. What advice for like, when did, like, what did you know that this was the thing? Do you have like a specific moment or a specific feeling you describe or like? I just, I truly loved, I loved painting. I loved the creative process. I loved the, the repair in the cars. I lo you know, um, there's been times when you do the old cars. I used to get a hoot out of doing the old cars where you couldn't buy a part. You had to make a part. You had to make, a, I made a, a rear fender for a Cougar. It was like a 67 Cougar. And the, it was all smashed up and we, and we couldn't buy a part for it. So I bought a hunk of sheet metal, like the stuff we put in the floor of that truck. And I hammered and dollied and made a quarter panel for it. And that was just very creative, very, uh, the engineering aspect of it was a lot of fun. Uh, this is, within the last few years, this is just uh, body work. This is, but it's fun. It's, uh, if I didn't have the customers, it would be, this would be a job. It would turn into a job then. But uh, the, the teasing around with the customers and the relationship I have with your mom and grandma and the work over here. And this has been, it's been just such a wonderful blessing over here. Uh, and like I said, the people are just, they're great. Yeah, I, I think you gotta follow your dream. If you, know, if you wanna play bass guitar, then play bass guitar and do it the best you can. And that's the only thing I did. There was times I had seven, 10 cars in the Autorama, the car show back in the, back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and you kind of build up a reputation, people seek you out. And if you wanna be a bass player, then be a bass player and be the best, like Martin Luther King says, if you're gonna be a garbage man, you be the best garbage man there is. So whatever job you have, you do the best you can. And that's all I've done my whole life. And that's it, you know, and I've truly been blessed. Yeah, you just you gotta treat people the way you wanna be treated and you just try to be the best you possibly can. And if you're gonna do films, you may not make any money for the first two, three, four, five years, you know, but then it's gonna hit and then you're gonna be Here's the flamed one. Perfect. And it's tough to see. Yeah, you can see. You can, okay. Yeah, but it was this great big lead sled and we flamed it and it was kind of like fun to flame it. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And this is just, you might got a small portion, like yes. all the pictures are gone of all yes. the cars. And these are just the crap ones. They're not the crap ones, but these weren't the best pictures. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.